So if that first one, y equals 2x minus 4, what point should I put on my graph first? Which one do you reckon you'd use, Oscar? I reckon I would. So this is what we've got to do. We're going to practice this today. We're going to try and shuffle it round so it looks like that. Work that upper back, eh? Work that upper back. All right, when you're ready. Two, one, let's go. Initiate with your head. Initiate with your head first, head first, head first, head first. Not your bum. How's school going for you, mate? <laughs> Not too bad, just, okay. just got to sort this biology out and it'll be sweet. Ah, uh, but what else are you doing? Is that the only science you're doing? Yeah, I'm only doing biology and then just HP and health, so. Good stuff, okay. Good, yeah, it's getting much better. When you nail these things on right, you've got to try and make sure you're putting a bit of purchase on your nail gun. Although it's a nail gun, you've still got to push them down, right? A school functions much like a sports team. Tape measure. I've had that many lunches here by myself because like Sundays, I always come back on Sunday. They both comprise of individual personalities and skill sets that must converge collectively to achieve a common goal. Hey. Oh yeah. Good. How are you? Good. Good day. Success relies on teamwork, support and a belief in a self-implemented culture that places purpose, respect and determination high on its list of priorities. Nudgee College, 15 kilometres north of Brisbane, can boast a reputation of being one of the country's leading sporting schools. Well, I think it's a, a school that's pretty rich in history. It's also a school that caters, I think, for students who excel in an, any number of things. And one area of Nudgee life where students strive is on the field of play. It's a very big part in the life of boys at Nudgee. So many benefits, I suppose, for boys being involved in sport. Sports, I think, is the way that the boys express their passion for the school, you know, the love of the blue and white. Yeah, everyone gets out on the grandstand and gets behind each other. It's just, you know, a brotherhood. And the bonds in which those brothers are often bound comes in the form of rugby union. Nudgee College has won the most first 15 GPS premierships. It gives you some idea as to the quality of teams, but also the importance that the school's placed upon the rugby program. And that program will feature in this new sports series that follows the Nudgee College first 15. This is our first game of the season. We want to show the rest of the GPS who we are. We're not saying anything back to them during the game. That's a distraction. I just want to say personally, it's been a privilege to play with all of you boys. This is something that we'll never forget. Come on, keep going, keep going. Head towards the post. I need everyone's eyes here. Don't talk to anyone else. So don't dwell on that now. You can't change it, OK? Think about what you're going to do when you get back out there. There's a reason you're undefeated this season. Stay with each other and just go hard. talk to you about a couple of things that are just for us to listen to. So when I come back today, I sort of think, you know, it's such a privilege to be here and doing what we're doing. And that's got to be our mindset. I'm incredibly excited about the GPS season that's coming up and really, really determined to make sure that our team can produce what we know we should and what we're worthy of producing. We're going to be driven to be playing our absolute best and be ruthless with how we do that but keep things in perspective. When we come off the field, we make sure that the main thing is we're a good person and that's the way we're doing stuff. Collectively, our team can be so much better when you've got people who are unified and everyone's on the same page, we're all doing the same stuff. So discipline for us, we spoke about keeping a blue head, not losing our cool, not talking back to the referee. After we've finished, win, lose or draw, we're gonna come up and hold our head. Well, I suppose two things we're trying to get out of the pre-season. One, we're trying to upskill the group of players who've put themselves forward. 
And secondly, we're trying to use the pre-season also as a little bit of a selection tool to see how people respond to the training and who's determined to improve. We're trying to get the boys in as good as physical shape as that they can be. From a team perspective, we're you know, starting to look towards building our team structures and our team systems. Through pre-season, you need to put in the hard work, and pre-season's one of the hardest, toughest things mentally and physically you'll ever do at the school. It's pretty much the worst training you can do because you can't see the season in like sight. All you're doing is beating yourself up against boys, double your size, and training your heart out every day of the week. We've got about two minutes on tracking only, but technique wise today we want to be perfect. We're going to take space, we're staying up high and really good shoulder. The teacher contact. charged with the responsibility of preparing the first 15 for their assault on the GPS title is Jared Alexander. Just go up nice and high, look at him in the eyes and then dip late. In the time that I've been lucky enough to be associated with the first 15, I'm really comfortable with the fact now that for me to gauge them as being successful, it's a lot more than just the results on the field. So we just got to be a little bit better in everything we do now and push ourselves a little bit. Like in this, push yourself a little bit more than we have been. Work hard off the ball and on the ball. Right, let's go, come on. Our result at the end of full time is not the most important thing. It's how we've played and then how we've conducted ourselves as well. That's good. Yep. Yeah, that's good work. He has basically three rules in his teams. Number one, always say please and thank you. Number two, be on time. Number three, wear the uniform with pride. Perfect. We're not doing anything sloppy, just think, oh yeah, we just... I guess the thing that he does constantly amazes me is how intellectual he is in the decision making and the way that he delivers messages uh, to boys. It's very hard working, I think, you know, um, you know, he spends hours and hours trying to decode line outs, figure out, you know, opposition's weaknesses. You know, he's very methodical, very um, precise. I've got a lot of my friends actually in this math class and he's a really in intelligent person. He takes the line outs really seriously. I can't set myself up as being the person who's in complete control of the line out. With line outs, what do Churchy do in their five-man line-out? What do they do in their seven-man line-out? And then how are we going to defend that? Every line-out, yeah. we'll throw the ball so that we've got a call and it's got to be... I'm just going to put them in a bit of pressure with that. It comes as no surprise that a maths teacher harbours a fascination with the physics of Rugby Union's most balletic set-piece. Nice, really good and lovely movement as well, that's nice. Yeah, that's good. The mechanics are complex, but attention to such detail will ensure that Nudgy start the season as one of the GPS Premiership favourites. A journey which continues in two days' time with a final trial game against Anglican Church Grammar School. Now, this is what's happening for the weekend. This is the pack we'll go with. So 40 just come this side, so when we name this, so we're all ready to go. Brendan Bell and Harry Vella first up. And Team selection at this stage of the season is less about the opposition and more about the competition between colleagues and schoolmates for a prized first 15 jersey. So that's where we're at. So you'll go 16 A's the Savo, Hayden will go the seconds, you'll go the seconds, and you go 16's as well. As the squad prepares for lunch, the hallowed turf of Ross Oval gives pardon to rugby league royalty. A king who returns to a former field of battle. Boys, it's a privilege, as was mentioned, to play against Nudgy. I never used to enjoy it. I've never got over in one way, shape or form. The wonderful camaraderie that exists 
Um, we get involved in training sessions like this and sometimes they can get a bit long. Uh, you think they're getting uh, a little bit uh, um, boring on some occasions. Don't ever let it become that because uh, each and every training session that you take part in is an education. And as part of the St Joseph's Nudgy education is the intent to provide its students with positive and supportive co-curricular experiences on and off the field. It is a very big part of the program at the school but also the life of the school and we talk to boys from when they first arrive, in fact before they arrive and, and the message is really clear, get involved in as much as you can and, uh, and what you'll find is that you'll learn about yourself and you'll learn about others. I think the co-curricular actually gives us that extra element to develop the skills and habits we develop in the classroom. We transfer those onto whether it be the rugby field, whether it be the cricket pitch, whether it be the swimming pool. It's a boarding school so you've got kids that are here 24-7 that they need that outlet outside of class time which is to be involved in sport. It's more about playing with your mates and getting out there and competing for the school that they, that they seem to have so much pride in. A couple of things with tradition. Tradition is a really powerful and important thing if it's a really solid, valuable tradition. And there's some things that are traditions that people and cultures actually have to dispense with because it's really something that's outdated or it's really not valued anymore. So when you look around in here, a couple of things strike me when I first rock in and even if I see old footage of Nudgy. What do you notice if you ever see anything old about Nudgee or Nudgee Rugby that hasn't changed much? Jersey. Right, the jersey, jersey's one where you look at the jerseys and even the really, really old ones. The material's different, but the, the jersey's not much different. I'm looking at this blazer that's sitting here. It's got first 15, 1947, 1948. Actually, it's in better shape than some kids' blazers now. Right, -o. So I don't want to spend any more time listening to me, just walk around and have a look. Alexander's committed efforts to remind the current crop of players of past glories go some way to assist the class of 2017 to forge a legacy of their own. Thing, like a lot of the guys who are just in here or legendary for the school are from incredibly diverse backgrounds like that. Now you can't do what those guys did. So a lot of the stuff that people have done in the past is extraordinary and we won't be able to emulate that, but we'll be able to create a little pathway in history. Why don't we better get out there and get onto the field? A little bit of rain, that's okay, we'll cope with that. The other thing is strapping. That's got to be done before training. We're not standing out here. The camp is missing six representative players who will return in a week. Hold on, just hold and carry. But the focus has and always will be about the team, with special attention placed on strengthening the squad as a whole. This year we've kept a group of 30 boys in the first 15 squad. Most of those boys now we'd be confident if they went on the field, they'd know our patterns of play and would do a good job for us. And I also think all the boys in that group would be confident of each other. So my thing would be that we'll be ready to go. I think, I think we'd be really confident in our preparation. I don't think um, any other team will out-prepare us. I don't think any other team will be willing to outwork us. So really crucial that we secure ball first. The pre-season has allowed combinations to be tested, strategies to be executed, but only in practice. The real test begins tomorrow during 80 minutes of a full contact trial. There is one place where pre-season starts earlier than anywhere else. Building a strong foundation is the mission of the Strength and Conditioning Director. My role at the college is to make sure that we have a quality and science-based athletic development program. We've got our lower body power work. So basically you've got three groups, one, two and three. We're not here to do something else. It's here to assist what's happening on the, on the rugby field. We know that it's a, it's a contact sport. There are injuries associated with it, but if we can make sure that the boys are doing the right things, we can keep them on the park, which is gonna get them to play better footy. Get more, come on, get after them more, get after them more. 
During the pre-season is obviously where we'll, the strength and conditioning staff get relied on a lot more heavily when we're trying to build that physical foundation. We would probably see them three to four times a week in the gym. In season, we drop that down to two times a week. A, a front row versus a wing. Go! Oh, you just blow out. You to blow out. Our main role here is to make sure that we're not training as if they're super rugby players with 12 years experience, we're looking at guys with youth development aspects trying to build their, their loads, their capacities and their techniques. The final commitment for training camp provides an opportunity for the players to be acknowledged in front of a crowd of parents and supporters. Year 12 senior Hayden Mosley is preparing for his final season as a nudgy player. Hey, so um, when do when when do we? Yeah, get... like five minutes. Five minutes, cool. Yeah, yeah. What um, what team are you in? Bees. I actually wish I was coaching. Coaching was so good. So much of money. Can I try? Miss all the kids. Oh, I know. At the end of the year, I was genuine. I genuinely was like, oh, you're all so good. <laughs> you're the D's, but God. Uh, welcome everybody. Um, Gives me great pleasure to be the manager again for 2017. Um, the boys have worked hard, as Simon said, for uh, many, many months now. Now to welcome uh, the first 15 squad, uh, Dan Atkinson, Hayden Mosley, Rajan Pasatoa. As Mosley is presented to the crowd, he willingly plays his part in welcoming the next generation of rugby players into the fold. What's happening there? What's happening? What time's your game over again? Yeah, 11. Mine? 11? Let's see if I get it. Okay. <laughs> Daddy! Walk right! One, two, three. three. Hug it, hug it, wish friend go. Ingo, butter bug, get some more. Pull it, pull it, tag on the tree. Nudge, Ingo, you love it. Yeah, yeah, Ingo, yeah. Ingo, pull it, tell me. Let's go! We've had a really good pre season. It's been very long, and I, I think. I know I'm keen for the games to start, and the boys would be the same. We've trained for a, a long, long time. And um, yeah, tomorrow will be exciting. So yeah, we're anxious, but we're really looking forward to it. The sun sets on the first phase of the season. It is a fruitless part of the preparation, with no measure or results to gauge progress. But the waiting game is almost up. It's a nervous time to be a first 15 trialist. A calm and influencing voice is required to be heard above the noise of nerves and anxiety. Just try and stay calm, then warm up, then ramp it up. Like, you don't want to expend too much nervous energy now. Boys, just listen up for two secs. Obviously, with the new chain sheds, we're close to the field. We probably don't all have to hang in here to get strapped at one time. But a 115, without a shadow of a doubt, you need to have headgear, footy boots, everything ready to go. G.A., do you want some water? He's there when the boys are going through tough times. He's there when they're having a laugh. You know, when I came here on my um, first look around, you know, he certainly made a big impression on me. You know, he's, he's light-hearted, he's funny. You know, a sense of humour that's definitely well appreciated. No, no, just as funny the second time. He's a bit of a larrikin and everyone loves Popo and he's just, he's just an all-around good bloke. And as a manager, he's a great influence for the, the boys especially. Two big nose. He's a legend, really. Around Nudgy, everyone loves him, loves to get around him. He is, he is part of the boys. He's a good, good bloke, you can joke around with him. Do you know Oscar, sir? Oh, I do know. Are you his brother? Yeah. Uh, dead ringer, now that you've mentioned it. No, he said you might help me out today, so that's great, mate. How are you feeling? Yeah, good. good. You can, if you can find a bit of shade, that's probably not a bad thing either. Or sure. I'm old enough and smart enough to know that if I'm coaching footy teams or cricket teams or whatever, then I'm going to get to meet a whole bunch of kids that I may have not otherwise had anything to do with. Now, being involved with that first 15 is a very privileged position, so I was asked to do that back in 2012 and I've done it ever since. I do transport, catering, jersey, strapping, um, pastoral care stuff, so the coaches can worry about the footy and not stress that things aren't going as they need. You spend so much time with those kids, like literally it'd be hundreds of hours over a pre-season and, and a season. So you get to know those kids and in many instances their parents really, really well. I'm guessing a lot of them will feel under an immense pressure because they're trialling for the first 15. So to play first 15 at this school is massive. So, you know, they've probably played in maybe bigger games, but I guess what's at stake is probably not being quite as big. So these are the jerseys they play in. First 15 jerseys, they only, like you only get them, if you only wear them if you play 
the stronger the bond you have with any human being, the more their ups and downs affect you personally. So given I put my heart and soul into it and I wear my heart on my sleeve, you want everything for those kids. And when they don't get it, you know, you, you feel really supported for them. So today's a trial, so it's a trial for next week and we're, we're trying to practice being perfect for next week. When you go onto the field, if you're playing like someone who everyone else in the team wants to have as their teammate, doing the grunt work that half the people in the grandstand won't notice, we rely on that rather than people being superstars and making big bustling runs. If we don't have people prepared to do that, everything else doesn't work. Kickoff is minutes away. The first competition game is days away. It's time for the season to begin. Next time on The Season. Next one, next one. Yeah, look, I'm happy. Second half, we got a little bit better. I try and build good relationships with the guys I'm coaching with. There's a lot of nerves running through the, through the body, a lot of uh, nervous energy, excitement. Off your hands, four! Yeah! For information on a campus tour, rugby clinic or open day, go to nudgy.com.